I don't think I've ever seen a more beautiful gated entrance to a park than this one. The metalwork is incredible and it should be a joy to photograph. However, there is a really busy background here. So let's see if I can find some ways with my phone to isolate this beautiful foreground from the busy, distracty background. I was going to put my phone really close up to the detail here and this is a test of the minimum focusing distance. How close can I get to my subject and still have it in focus? And the good news with this phone is I think that's probably about 15 or so centimetres, which is great. And what that's doing, most importantly of all, is throwing everything behind that point out of focus. So that means that this bulb just here, these bulbs here are in focus. I can tap just to double check that. But the people walking by, the buses, the cars on this busy roundabout are out of focus and therefore not providing too much of a distraction. So let's keep on tapping to focus. And that is doing what I wanted it to do, what I hoped it would do. It is creating this, this focus, creating the, the separation between my foreground and the background and removing that distraction. Very good. So let's take a look. Always, even if I don't think it's going to work, I'll take a look at what options from a lens perspective I've got. And well, I've gone onto the wide angled lens. And in my experience, when you go onto a wide angled lens, that separation kind of goes and you have a much more extensive depth of field, which means that a lot more of what is landing on your camera sensor is going to be in focus. So yes, we've got fairly large, our, our flowers in the foreground, but also everything in the background. That bus going by right now, for example, is also in focus, which can be just a little bit distracting, not quite what I want. Although I do rather like the, the shapes, the uh, distortions, uh, as the straight lines become a little bit exaggerated and curved. It's not necessarily an unpleasing shot, but it's not giving me the, the clean shot that I necessarily wanted. But it's certainly giving me some interesting shapes. So I'll get those while I'm here. Now, the other lens option I've got on here is a two times zoom. Now, oh wow. Oh, this is the best of both worlds for me. So I'm able to get some really specific detail on these bulbs, this one here in particular. I'm able to focus on it, but again, the background is even more blown out in a way. And often you find that is the case with a, with a lens with a longer focal length, more of a zoom on it. Anything that isn't in focus is, is blurred out even more. And that certainly seems to be the case here. Having the sun over my shoulder means that the details are beautifully lit as well and we've got a nice complement there the blue sky and it is a wonderfully blue sky here today is just offset with the complementary colors of the orange and the, the brown and the bronze of the metalwork so it's going to capture that that's all good and then of course the other thing that i'll do just while i'm here is just adjust the angle because I've been looking level at the details. But if I angle up, yes, I do lose a bit of the light, but now I've got a lot more of that blue sky. And I'm now able to throw, actually, some of the detail of these flowers out of focus as well. So I've got my foreground, which is what I want, but I just get a sense of a lot more depth of those as well. If I go into my one-time zoom, I do get less of a fall-off. As you can see, a lot more is in focus when I'm further away from it. I think maybe the two times is the, is the winner here. But we've tried a few different lenses, a few different tactics to try and get rid of the distractions and really focus in on the subject, despite it being a really busy scene here. Let's see which of those were the most successful. 
With the camera's wide angle lens, immediately you can see that everything is in focus and that means that we've got so much going on in this image. It is a, a, a wild image, pretty difficult to tell what it is that we're looking at or indeed where the photographer, or where I, wants our viewer to look. So yeah, wasn't quite the mayhem that I had in mind, sadly. This image contains a very sharp sense of focus, both technically, the foreground flowers here in sharp focus, and the background out of focus too. We've got the, the sky, we've got the buildings and the trees, and even this a uh, rather annoying little van, although in some ways the timing of it fitting neatly within that quadrant at the bottom there uh, is, is quite fortunate. So it's certainly not an unsuccessful image. I'm focusing the viewer's attention where I wanted to. The flowers are kind of pointing, giving me some, some looking lines across the frame as well. So that works, that works pretty well for me. This van is a bit of a distraction and in, a, in an ideal world I'd probably do without that, but nevertheless, this, this image did what I, what I hoped it would. In this image, I deployed my two times lens, and the resulting focus fall off, and also I framed upwards a little bit. And well, it's given me what I think is, for me, the most successful image of this gate that I've taken. Things that really stand out to me here are the complementary colours of the blue sky, but with the yellows and golds and browns and bronzes of the flowers. The, the blue is separated nicely by the vertical metallic branches of this gate too. We've got the, the heads of the flowers looking off, controversially perhaps off frame, but I rather like that, as well as looking on frame as well. So for all of those reasons combined, this is the most successful, it's the image I'm happiest with anyway of this gate. <laughs>